Yeah, so we'll just chant the verse and then we can start off. Panchanam Panchatmakatve Panchanam Panchatmakatve Samane Pite Shucha Samane Pite Shucha Vaishesh Yaktu Tadvada Tadvada Okay, so this particular verse it discusses another topic not found in Tattva Bodha or in Atma Bodha or any of the other texts which we have studied in regard to Panchikarana. So what does he say? Panchanam, the five elements. Panchatma Katve, since they are of the same nature. What same nature? They have all the five elements in them. Each of the gross five elements, they have the Five elements itself. So he says, the, then what is the reason for naming them? Since they have all the five elements, what is the reason for naming them a particular, you know, name? And then he gives Teshucha. So Vaishasyatu is a uh, is a sutram in the Brahma Sutras. So iti nyayena from the discussions in the Brahma Sutras, he says because of discussion, that is why we are able to arrive at this particular name. And what are those sutras? So the, that this particular sutra is called Vaishashyat Sutra. So then Vaishashyat means the predominance. So Vaishashyat Sutra, because of the predominance of a particular element, Tadvadaha, the same name can be taken. So this is, he's giving the reason. He's saying that you can name it Hmm? A particular element, for example, Akasha is named Akasha, even though it has got all the five elements, Akasha is being named Akasha because of the predominance of the Akasha element, which is what? 50% of the gross Akasha element, 50% is Akasha and one eight each is the other four. So, they're indicating that this is the reason why we can retain the original names. Because in the gross elements, which consist of the five components, one element is predominant. And therefore, we are naming that particular element in accordance with the name of the dominant element. Iti nyayena. Because of this logic in the Brahma Sutra, Akasha di Vipadesha Samhavati. The name Akasha, which belongs to the Sukshma element, the Tanmatra, that is retained in the Bhautikam also. So that's the reason he has given. Okay, now we look at topic number 103, which we will read. Tadani Makashe. Tadani Makashe. Shabde Vigajate. Shabde Vigajate. Vayo Shabda Sparishao. Vayo Shabda Sparishao. so now he says, Tadanim. Tadanim means once the process of Panchikaranam, which we discussed earlier, is over. What happens when the process of Panchikaranam is over? All the, the Tanmatras, all the Sukshma Bhutanis, they become Thula Bhutanis. And we should remember that when we say Thula Bhutanis, gross elements, what we are saying is that they are being called gross elements. For what reason? Because they are now visible to the sense organs. 
That is the difference between the Thula Panchabhotani and the Sukshma Panchabhotani. The Sukshma Panchabhotani is not available to the sense organs. So Sukshma Panchabhotani is Indriya Agocharam, while Thula Panchabhotani is Indriya Gocharam. So he says, in that Sthula Panchabhotani, Akashi. In that Sthula Akasha, what is there? Shabda Abhivyajyate. The attribute of sound is present. In fact, if you remember some earlier discussions, we had said that in Akasha, all sounds are present as what? As the basic sound, which is Omkara. Right? Again, this is an explanation which we have probably not seen before. While we have, we know that in Akasha, what is the property of Akasha? It has got sound. Right? So when you say Akasha has got sound, we have to say that this sound is present in what form? So Shastra says this sound is present in the form of Omkara. In front of Om. Now that Om is Basically unmanifest. So he says, Shabda Abhivyajyate. That sound is present, but it comes to manifestation only on the happening of two events. Either by Sanyoga or Vyoga. So, for example, when you clap your hands, there is a sound. Right? The clapping of hands is the hands coming together, which is called Samyoga or Sanyoga. And here the interesting thing to note is that according to Shastra, this clapping sound is not produced when the hand claps. Okay, very important point. The clapping sound is not produced when the hands come together. Some yoga. What happens is the sound is always there as Omkara, but it is manifested when the hands come together. Big difference. That normally we say when the hands come together, sound is produced. But Shastra says no. Sound is there all the time. But on the happening of Sam Yoga or Sai Yoga, when the hands come together, that unmanifest sound becomes manifest. So it's something like the consciousness principle, the original consciousness is not visible, but the reflected consciousness we can understand. So there's something like that, that the sound is there all the time in the Akasha, right? But when the hands come together, that sound becomes manifest. Similarly, Vyoga, Vyoga means separation. Samyoga, Samyoga or Sanyoga means coming together. So, this sound becomes manifest abhivyajyate only when there is samyoga or vyoga. So, samyoga we discussed when the hands come together, the sound which was present in the space in the akasha it becomes manifest. Vyoga. So, can you think of an example for vyoga? Sound is manifest. The sound remains there as unmanifest sound unless some, something tears apart and then the sound comes. So, Vyoga means tearing apart, going apart. What is an example for that? Uh, when a balloon bursts. When a balloon bursts or when you tear paper. Paper. You tear a piece of paper, what happens? A sound comes. So, Sanyoga Yoga, Vyoga is there. So, that is the, as far as the Akasha is concerned. Similarly, he says, in Vayu, in Sthula Vayu. What, what gunas are there? Shabda is there and Sparsha is there. Now we had talked earlier about Samanya Gunaha and Vishesha Gunaha. Right? In Akasha, the Shabda, the sound, what is it? Samanya Guna or Vishesha Guna? Vishesha. Vishesha Guna. Now in Vayu, what are the two gunas? Shabda Sparsha. Which is Samanya, which is Vishesha? Sparsh is Vishesha, Shabda is Samanya. Sparsh is Vishesha, Shabda is Samanya. Right. 
And similarly, you have to you have to just extend the argument in the same way. Chabda sparsha abhivyajjate. These two gunas become man manifest. Similarly, agnau in agni chabda sparsha ropani abhivyajjate abhivanja, and in apsu in water chabda sparsha rupa rasaha abhivyajjate. And similarly, in earth in prithvi prithviyam chabda sparsha rupa rasa gandhascha abhivyajjate. So it's the same thing that just as you can as the sound becomes manifest in akasha similarly the other two gunas become manifest in vayu the three gunas become manifest in agni four gunas become manifest in water and five gunas become manifest in prithvi and again we should note that this is an increasing order of grossness when there is only one guna only one sense organ one indriya can recognize when there are two gunas two indriyas can recognize so that is why when you have two gunas that element is grosser than the one which only one sense organ can recognize i said there according to that logic it goes on in increasing order of grossness and at prithvi level it is the maximum level of grossness because all the five sense organs can recognize Does it make sense? It's an interesting take. You don't see this in Tattva Boda. How it is being named? How do the gunas manifest? A very interesting take. Lot, lot of acharyas have commented upon this, and what we have, we are presenting is the sum totality of all those commentaries. Now we look at topic number one zero four. Ete bhya panchi krite bhya. महर्जनस्तपमी एतन्ना अतल वितल सुतल रसातल तलातल महातल पाताल अधोधो लोकाना ब्रह्मांड से तदंतर्गत उत्पत्तिर्भवति So we are now going to see what is coming out of the panchabhutas. So far, what we saw, there is sukshma panchabhutas, which is the tan matras. Panchi karnam takes place. The sthula panchabhutas, the bhauti comes are formed. Then what happens? This is the process of creation being described. Okay. So he says, ete bhya panchi krite bhya bhute bhya. Etebhya from these panchi krite bhya bhute bhya those panch mahabhutas which have gone through the process of panchi karanam that's why panchi krite bhya which has gone through the process of panchi karanam what happens utpatti bhavati the following are created now he's going to give a list of what is being created so first <coughs> now we are not going according to the List in the verse. I have tried to arrange it so make it more, you know, manageable. 
first we'll say brahmandasya the entire entire universe the entire infinite expanding universe is created and it is called brahma anda why because why is the universe called anda what is anda from it uh, are born the we others. are not saying from brahmanda brahmanda i'm no. saying is the name of the universe it's elliptical it is elliptical it is shaped like a at least shastra says the universe is shaped like an egg and egg is called andam and therefore brahma anda okay and within this brahma anda he says you will find 14 lokas 14 separate lokas there's 14 regions. Seven are upper and seven are lower. What are the seven upper regions? He gives the particular names. Bhuhu, Bhuvaha, Sovaha. Okay. Bhuhu is what? Bhuloka. And then Mahar Loka, that is Maha Jana Tapa. Mahar Loka, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka, Satya Loka. Etam, eta, etat, namakana. So that is seven. Bhuhu, Bhuvaha, Swaha. Three lokas. Mahaloka, Janloka, Tapaloka. Six lokas. Satyam, eti. Satyam, Satyaloka is the seventh one. So beginning with Bhuloka, which is our loka, where we stay, and ending with Satyaloka. These are the seven lokas. Satyaloka is also called Brahma Loka. So that's a name which not very common to use, but those who are familiar with Shastram will know. Satyam means Brahman Loka. <laughs> Therefore, these seven Lokas are the higher Lokas. How do, how do we know? Etat, Namakanam, these seven Lokas with these names, Upari Upari. Upar means what? About higher. Okay, so hmm. Upari Upari means the use of two Uparis means each loka is on a higher plane than the previous one. So if you are starting with Bhuloka, then Bhuva Loka is higher, Swaha Loka is higher, Mahaloka is higher, Jana Loka is higher, Tapa Loka is higher, and Brahma Loka, Satya Loka is the highest. So Vidya Mananam, you should know that each of these lokas, beginning with Bhu Loka and ending with Satya Loka, each loka is higher than the previous plane. Okay, now we have to understand carefully that this is not a physical height, not in terms of miles or feet or whatever. But this difference of higher, you have to understand as higher in the in quality of life. Like you have a better body, you have more pleasures, all caused by what? What is the difference between being born in Bhuloka and being born in you know Maharloka, Jana Loka, or Satya Loka? What is the difference? The punyam, the amount of punyam which you have got, which caused the birth. This gradation is on that particular stock of punyam that you have got. So if you are born on Bhu Loka, a certain amount of punyam is there. If you are born on the next higher Loka, more punyam is there. And if you are born in Brahma Loka, maximum punyam is there. For to get a birth in Brahma Loka. So that is the understanding of this particular Loka. And then he gives the lower seven lokas. So you can say lower. Namakana with these names. What are the names? Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Rasatala, Talatala, Mahatala, Patala. These are the seven lower lokas. Atala, Vitala, Sutala. Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Rasatala, Talatala, Mahatala, Patala. That is the seven lokas. Okay. Namakana with these names. And how are they placed? Adho, Adho, Vidyamana, Nam. Each loka in that list, each later loka is lower than the previous one. So again, we have to say that this lower than the previous one has to be taken not as spatial, but in qualitative aspects. And loka Nam, Tad Antar Gataha. So within these 14 lokas, what happens? Chatur vidha stula sharirana. Within these four lokas, there are physical bodies, stula shariram, of chatur vidha. 
four types. What are those four types? That we will see in the next topic. Here he simply introduces saying that in each of those four lokas, you will find that there are four classes of physical bodies. Then, tad uchitanam annapana dinam cha. Uchitanam means what? Uchit, uchit means appropriate to. So, tad uchitanam. This tad refers to the four classes of physical bodies. Okay. Tad uchitanam and appropriate to the four classes of physical bodies. Annapana dinam cha. Food and drinks appropriate for each of these bodies. They are also born from the Panchabhutas. That is why, since everything is made up of the Panchabhutas, that is why the universe is called Prapanchaha, made up of five elements. Okay, any questions so far? It's a different topic, a little bit more interesting than the dry thing we are seeing. So, anyway. Yes, John. In the Topic 103. <clears throat> yeah. what, what is the difference between um, some yoga and the yoga? So yoga means to come together. Yoga means to separate. Okay. okay. So don't go by the word yoga over there. It's nothing to do with yoga. Thank you. Right. Now we will repeat. We will uh, read topic 105. Chatur Vida Sharirani tu. Chatur Vida Sharirani tu. Jara Yujanda ja. Jara Yujanda ja. Sweda Jod Vija. Sweda Jod Vija. Akyani. 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 Okay, so he had talked about four different physical bodies. Again, this is another topic which we have not seen in Atma Bodha or Tattva Bodha. So he says, Chadur Vida Sharirani, <clears throat> the four types of physical body, Stula Shariram, referred to Akhyani, which were referred to earlier. Akhyani means name, are being named now. Chadur Vida Sharirani, Akhyani, are being named now. What are they? Jarayujam. Jarayu Ajam means born from Jarayu. Jarayu Ajam. Jarayu is the womb. Any womb from mammal, right? Jarayu Ajam, born from Jarayu. The next one you have to carefully segregate. Andaja. Andaja means born from eggs. The third one also to carefully separate. Swedaja and Udbija. So that Sweda Sweda Jod Bijaha is Swedaja plus Udbijaha. So, what is the first one? Jara Yujam, born from wombs. Andaja, born from eggs. Swedaja, Sweda is basically moisture. Swedaja is born from moisture. Udbijaha. Udbija means Uth, that which comes upwards after breaking the ground. So, Udbija means that which is grown in the ground, which comes up. And breaks the ground and so comes up. You know? Swedaja is basically taken as all insect categories because, though of course, insects don't come from moisture, but here very picturesquely it is mentioned that these are all found in moist places and therefore Swedaja. They are as if they are born from the moisture. These are the four different types of bodies. Then naturally the question will come what? Can you give some examples of these, each of these bodies? Right? So, here we go to topic number 106. We will read Jara Yujani. Jara Yujani. Jara Yubhyo. Jara Yubhyo. Shatani. Chatani Manushya Pashwadini Manushya Pashwadini. Okay, so you can understand Jarayujani. This category of Jarayu Jarayuja consists of what Jarayubhya Jatani, born from wombs of all beings which are born from wombs. 
In English, we call it uh, viviparous, okay? Born from wombs. And he gives an example. Manushya, Pashu, Adini. Like Manushyas and animals. And you should note that Sadananda is not just manufacturing these things out of his head, okay? This list is found in an Upanishad called Aitreya Upanishad. He just borrowed it from there, just presenting it that, presenting that. So he has talked about Jara Yujani, where he says that those living beings like human beings and animals which are born from the womb of the mother, they come under Jara Yujani. And then we go to topic number seven, where he talk about, talks about eggs. Andajani. Andajani. Andebhyo. Andebhyo. Jatani pakshipanna galan. Pakshipanna gadini. Okay. So Andajani. Andajani is what? Andebhyo jatani. Born from eggs. So born from wombs what? Was what? In English we said? Viviparous. What are those beings which are born from eggs called? Oviparous. Ovo viviparous. Oviparous. Also. Okay. So born from eggs. Now you should carefully note that Shastra basically uh, talks about these, these beings who are born from eggs as dvijas also. What is what is the dvija? Born twice. Born twice. Born twice. What does the word term dvija normally refer to? A Brahmin. Brahmin. Why so? Because of the because upanayana and ceremony, they are supposed to have been born. Because again. one is his natural birth of the child, and the second is the birth into into Vedic heritage in terms of the upanayana ceremony. But here, it's a much more restricted meaning. Dvijas are also, can you guess why they are called Dvijas? They have two limbs. No. They have, they have two births. First they are born as an egg. And, oh. then, and then they are born as the whatever comes out of the egg. Okay, bird. Or, so they are called Dvijas. And it gives examples. Pakshi, Pannagadini. Pakshi means birds. Pannaga is an interesting name, which means snakes. The definition of Pannagadi is Padbhyam na gachati eti Pannaga. Can you understand? Padbhyam na gachati means what? Doesn't have legs. Not walking with no two feet. Legs. Gachati means moves. Padbhyam na gachati means which does not move on legs. So, Padbhyam na gachati eti Pannaga. That which does not move legs on legs. So, obviously, snake. Now, there is a caveat over here, okay? Not all snakes. Here it says that under this Andajani falls what? Pakshi and snakes. But you should note that not all snakes are born through eggs. There are some snakes which are born directly without eggs. For example, some, some snakes are Jarayuja, born from the womb. What are they? You're not familiar with snakes, I think. If you live in Kerala, then you'll be familiar with snakes. Water okay. snakes. Water snakes don't give eggs. That's one. Then the anaconda. Mm. That's born directly. No eggs there. Some sort of vipers. Vipers, not, not the viper of the car. V-I-P-E-R, vipers. They also are born without eggs. So, this is an exception. Generally speaking, snakes are born from eggs. And therefore, he says, like snake. But we should broadly understand that wherever there are no eggs, we have to reverse the category. We can't say just because it is a snake, it is going to be under Jani. It has to depend upon the type of birth. So those snakes which give birth without eggs directly from the body, they will fall under the previous section, Jara Yujani. 
now we go to the topic number 108 the third type of body swedajani swedajani swedye bhyajatani swedye bhyajatani yuka mashka mashakadani cha yuka mashakadani cha so what is swedajani swedhyo ho jata born from moisture and he gives example yuka mashaka adi now yuka is um, you know yuka is lice which you find in the air <laughs> if you are not careful the lice which you find in the air that is yuka and mashaka is a general term for insects and flies and stuff like that now you should carefully note that when you say born from it's not not literally born from moisture okay because without some sort of a source nothing can be born but it's basically all found in moisture so that you understand that carefully they have classified everything which is found in moisture like if you go somewhere to a garden and lift a big stone and there's a wet wet ground underneath what will you find you will find all sort of little little worms right it doesn't mean they were born from the moisture but they are thriving over there so that is why they call it swedajan and the interesting tidbit over here is that what do you think is the percentage of you know if you consider all the living species what do you think is the percentage of uh, you know this mashakadini the motor fall falls under this particular category yuk mashakadini and plants if you add them together what do you think is the percentage of all living species guess maybe 99% 94 98% you know and what is interesting to note is that 98% of living beings if you compare the resources that they use, that they utilize with less than a quarter percent of human beings what a waste and anyway, it's only by the way okay sadananda doesn't say that so i'm not attributing it to him okay now comes yeah. the last let me just finish the last one then we will talk the last what do you call it, type of body so udbijani 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 bhumi mudbidya bhumi mudbidya jatani lata vrakshadini jatani lata vrakshadini Udbij jani. What is that? That is defined as bhumim udbidya jatani. Bhumi is earth. Udbidya means breaking open the earth. Jatani is born. So udbij jani, this particular category, is referring to those living beings which are born by breaking open the earth. And he gives examples. Lata. Lata means creepers. Virakshaha. trees so anything which is born from the earth falls under this category right so if you look at this category udbijani and the last category swedajani that is what i said they account for more than 95 to 97% of the living species not in terms of resource utilization but in terms of number of species okay now we look at topic number 110 110 अत्रापि चतुर्विध सकल स्थूल शरीर एकानेक बुद्धि वनवत्जलाशय वनवत्जलाशयृक्षवत ओके सो अत्रापि हियर ऑल्सो 
atra api here also here also where also at the level of all these thula sharirams gross bodies right why does he say api because the same principle has to be extended to sukshma sharirama also so atra api chaturveda sakala sthula sharirama this principle we had talked about earlier in case of super shukshma sharira so atrapi means we have to extend that principle also to the physical bodies remember that the topic of physical body is over right now he is talking about the earlier principle what is that samashti vyashti principle so he says chaturvida sakala sthula shariram all the four types of physical bodies ek aneka buddhi vishayataya can be perceived by you buddhi vishayata means can be perceived or understood by you ek aneka in two different ways ways what is that vanavata jalashaya vadva right in totality like the forest and the ocean like vanavata and jalashaya tamashti hi so if you look at all these physical bodies you can either look at them in totality look at all the physical bodies together and just like you call all the trees a forest and you call all the waves an ocean similarly you can look at these physical bodies or vrikshavat jalavadva vyashtihi api bhavat or you can look at them individually like instead of looking at all the trees and saying this is one forest you can look at all the trees and say there are 20000 trees right or you can look at all the waves and say this is one ocean or you can say there are many many waves in this particular entity there is two ways of extending of of looking one looking is from the samashti angle from the macro angle one looking is from the vyashti angle from the micro angle so what are they now we go to the next topic topic 111 etat samashti upahitam chaitanyam etat samashti upahitam chaitanyam vaishvanaro viraditi uchyate vaishvanaro viraditi uchyate sarva nara abhimanitva विविधम राजपहितैतन्यम दिस्मष्टि चैतन्यम और दिस ओरिजिनल कॉन्शियस्नेस विच इज samashti upahita so you have to rearing those words etat chaitanyam this brahman this atman this oc which has got samashti upahita which has got samashti upadi samashti here means the macro universe so the macro universe is the upadi and we are talking here about what about the <coughs> physical universe okay so etat samashti upahitam chaitanyam this original consciousness with the universe the physical universe as the upadi has two names one is vaishvanara and one is called virat so we are familiar with them both the names because they are both appeared in bhagavad gita so one name is vaishvanara one name is virat virat now virat name you have seen where apart from the gita Tatvabodha. Tatvabodha also, but Tatvabodha did not tell you why it was called Virat. So here he is saying he is giving the rationale for the names. What is the logic? Are they just names randomly taken, or is there a particular logic? So he says Vaishva Naraha because Sarva Nara Abhimanitva. Abhimana means identification. Sarva Naraha all. So Naraha here is taken as the human race. All of all race, all bodies. Okay, Naraha generally means humans, but here we don't look at that. And Sarva Naraha, all bodies. So Sarva Naraha Abhimanitva. 
because of the identification with all the gross bodies vaishvana raha so you you guys can still hear me right the lights have gone off but my mobile is on yes sir we can hear you uh, so if you don't see me it's okay doesn't matter so vaishvana raha is sarvana raha abhimanitva because of identification with all the gross bodies he is called vaishvana raha that is the first name the second name is virat because vividham rajamanatvaccha vividham means in many ways rajamanatva he appears in different ways so this virat he is called virat because it appears in different ways in different forms like humans animals insects plants all the other therefore it is called virat so two names are given vaishvana raha and virat vaishvana raha because of the identification with all the gross bodies virat because of the different ways in which that chaitanya appears in reflected in humans reflected in animals reflected in insects reflected in plants he is saying that virat is because there are many rcs that same oc appears as many different rcs and therefore it is called virat okay now we look at topic number 112 we will read asyaisha samashti asyaisha samashti thula shariram thula shariram anna vikaratva anna vikaratva annamaya koshah जागृतिपदिष्य सो अस्यमि स्थूल शरीर अन्न विकार अन्नमय कोशः सो ही सेइंग अस्यैषा समष्टि दिस समष्टि स्थूल शरीर द मैक्रो लेवल ग्रॉस बॉडी व्हाट इज इट कॉल्ड एट द समष्टि लेवल इट इज कॉल्ड अन्नमय कोशः दिस इज नॉट अन्नमय कोशः ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल द फिजिकल बॉडी द फिजिकल यूनिवर्स व्हिच यू सी He is saying it is called the Annamaya Kosha of whom of Ishvara. Why? Because Anna Vikaratva. It is a product of food. So just as the human body or any any animal body is born out of food, is sustained by food, and dissolves back into food. So we have seen all that before. He says the same argument applies to the Annamaya Kosha of Ishvara also, and also. स्थूल भोग आयतन बिकॉज इट इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट आयतन इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट स्थूल भोग फॉर एक्सपीरियंसिंग द स्थूल यूनिवर्स स्थूल प्रपंच इट इज कॉल स्थूल शरीर ऑलसो सो टू नेम्स आर देर इज गिवन वन इज स्थूल शरीर एंड वन इज अन्नमय कोश रिमेम्बर दिस इज एट दि समि लेवल so this thula bhoga is jagrat avastha right why because the external world bhoga is experienced when in jagrat avastha only and therefore he says jagrat iti cha vyapadishyate the physical body is given three names of the, of the universe of samashti shariram of ishvara the physical body of the of ishvara is given three names one is annamaya kosha one is thula shariram and one is jagrat the name jagrat also is given to the physical world the universe the universe as such is also called jagrat he doesn't say avastha here he just says jagrat because it is in jagrat avastha that the physical body the, the whole world is experienced okay now he goes to vyashti so we will read topic number 113 एक व्यक्ति उपहितम चैतन्यम 
ಅಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಾದಿ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವೆನ್ subjected to the individual body as a upadi what is it called vishvaha iti uchyate again why is it called vishva is being he is telling you here why because sthula shariradi pravishtatvat because this sthula shariram is pervaded by the sukshma sharira remember the rc is it pervades the the rm also right sthula shariram is the rm so the rc pervades the rm and because of that what happens sukshma shariram abhimanam aparityajya so when the rc identifies with the rm which is the individual gross body what does it do ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಶರೀರಂ ಅಭಿಮಾನ ಅಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಹಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಅಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರ ದ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಶರೀರ ಹಿ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಟಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ gross body using the subtle body as a medium it does not give up the identification with the subtle body right we should note that here when you say that the consciousness it is identifying with the gross body without giving up the with the identification with the subtle body though it is not stated in the verse we have to also add and also without giving the giving up the identification with with what with karana shariram karana shariram so all the three bodies that consciousness identifies it okay very very important little little point which you don't find in patbhoda but we should keep it on the memory so that we understand patbhoda better so we are almost nearing the end of the day are you because we lost 10 minutes are you okay with another 10 minutes yes sir. yes yes okay so we'll just try to finish this particular sir. portion so topic 114 asye asya pesha vyashti hi asya asya pesha vyashti hi thula shariram anna vikaratva deva ಅನ್ನಮಯ ಕೋಶೋ ಜಾಗೃತಿ ಚೋಚ್ಯತೆ ಸೊ ಅಷ್ಟಿ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ಅಷ್ಟಾ ವ್ಯಷ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ಅನ್ನ ವಿಕಾರೇವ because it is born as a product of annam hetoho because of that reason annamaya kosha it is also called the annamaya kosha now here he is talking about the vyashti level annamaya kosha the individual annamaya kosha the micro level annamaya kosha right in two or two topics back we are also talked about annamaya kosha but it was the macro level samashti level but here he is talking about the micro level and he says jagrat iti chochyate it is also called jagrat because it is an instrument of interacting with the external world at both levels it is jagrat only 
So with this, we have discussed what all three prapanchas, three RMs, and three RCs. All these discussions are over. Now we look at topic number 115. A slightly longer one. We will read. Tadani me tau. Tadani me tau. Vishwa Vaishwana Rao. Vishwa Vaishwana Rao. Digvata Kvarunaha. Dig Vatar Kvaruna Varuna. Dig Vatar Kvaruna Varuna. Ashwibihi Kraman. Ashwibihi Kraman. Nian Trena. Nian Trena. Protra the Indriya Panchakena. Kraman Shabdas Parsha Rupa as a Gandhan. Kraman Shabdas Parsha Rupa as a Gandhan. Agni Indro Pendra. Agni Indro Pendra. Yama Prajapati Bihi. Yama Prajapati Bihi. Kraman Nian Trena. Vaga the Indriya Panchakena Kramat. Vaga the Indriya Panchakena Kramat. Vaga the Shankara Chutai Kraman Shankara Chutai Kraman Nian Trena Nian Trena Mano Buddhi Hankara Chitta Kena Mano Buddhi Hankara Chitta Kena Antre Indri Chatushkena Kramat Sankalpanishaya Ankari Jaitamsha Karvani Tanas Buddha Vishayan and Bhavata Jagratas Tano by Pragna Jagratas Tano by So, can you guess what we are talking about? There are 14 organs, 14 indriyas, and there are 14 corresponding devatas. Okay. But we have left out five. So here you see that you don't, uh, prana is not uh, taken into calculation, into, into the consideration, because prana, sarananda doesn't con consider as an indriya. So here, prana is not taken into consideration. And therefore, you have five karmendriyas, five, five jnanendriyas, and the four aspects of antakarana. So there are 14. right? So there are 14 devatas corresponding to 14 organs. The organs are the physical part. Golakams. So 14 golakams, 14 devatas, and broadly we call it adhi daivam. Then there are 14 <coughs> objects corresponding to 14 indriyas. This is Adi Bhutam. Okay, so we look at it. Tadani etau. During that, Tadani means during Jagrat Avastha etau. These two. What are these two? Vishwa, Vaishwa, Naraha. The Vyashti, which is Vishwa. The Vyashti RC, that is Vishwa. And Vaishwa, Naraha. The Samashti RC and he uses the names. He says Dvig, Vata, Arka, 
ವರುಣ ಅಶ್ವಿಧಿ ಕ್ರಮಾನ್ ನಿಯಂತ್ರಣ ಶ್ರೋತಾದಿಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕೇನ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೋತಾದ್ರಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕೇನ ಫೈವ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಶ್ರೋತ್ರ ವಿತ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೋತ್ರಾದಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕೇನ ದೋಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಶ್ರೋತ್ರ ವಿತ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ನಿಯಂತ್ರಣ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ದಿಕ್ ದಿಕ್ ದೇವತ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಕ್ವಾರ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಕ್ವಾರ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾತ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಯು ದೇವತ ವಾಯು ದೇವತ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪರ್ಶ ಟಚ್ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅರ್ಕ ಅರ್ಕ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸನ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ದೇವತ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಐಸ್ ವರುಣ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಟಂಗ್ and ashvihi ashvihi means ashvini devata ashvini kumaras they are the ashvini devatas they control the indriya which is of smell and controlled by these devatas so these all these devatas you have seen in tatva bodha also right controlled by these devatas what happens the indriyas interact with the sense objects now kraman here the word krama means in sequence so you have to touch take my respectively so controlled by these devatas the five jnana indriyas they interact respectively with the sense organs the sense objects which are what sabda shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha right so ears will interact with shabda skin with sparsha eyes with roopa and so on so he with that he disposes of jnana indriyas and then he takes up karma indriya that says agni indriyo pendra yama prajapati bihi the devatas of the karma indriyas what are they agni hi agni is the is a devata for what for the tongue speech then indraha so indro pendra has to be broken into two indraha and upendra so indra is the devata for what tatvamoda mm-hmm. pani pani the hands upendra is for the feet upendra is vishnu for the feet then yama is for excretion and prajapati is for reproduction the same thing of tatva bodha is repeating but in different words and he says kraman niyantritena directed by those devatas those karmendriyas which are what vaga indriya panchakena the five karmendriyas like vaga etc they come into contact krama in sequence in sequence with what vachana adana gamana visarga ananda vachana is speech adanam means to hold and to grasp with hands gamanam is walking feet visarga here is excretion so the anus and ananda is for reproduction so with this he has completed the indriyas then he takes up the antakaranam he says chandra chaturmukha shankarachute shankarachyutaihi so chandra is the moon moon presides over what mind Mana. then chaturmukha brahm chaturmukha means brahma ji presides over what buddhi then shankara who shankara not shankaracharya who else shankara Come on, guys. Which Lord is called Shankara? No? Lord Shiva. Okay, so presiding over the Ahankara and Achyuta. Who is Achyuta? Mm-hmm. 